Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another video. I know I've been absent from YouTube for a while, but today I'm back at it with a very special video for the E46. In today's video, we will be doing upgraded 135 Brembo brakes on the front and rear of my BMW E46. Now, before I show you the brake calipers in a second, they are an absolute awesome phoenix yellow color that's going to go super good with the san marino paint job so let me show you everything that we have and we'll get to work yes there is a lot to this process this will be sort of an overview and there will be some sort of diy things to it but again it's just too much to show everything in the video a couple things that i should note before getting into it you will need adapters for the front six pot brembo brakes the rears bolt right up from a 135 i'll have the brackets linked down below i'm using the ones from seams legit garage they look awesome they come with the lines all the hardware everything that you need uh, i do have my style 135 wheels on the car so i do need to run spacers that were provided from burger motorsports which i'll show you guys in a second and then we also have to use 135 brake sensors and i'll show you guys that as well but before i get into that don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a huge thumbs up as it helps out the channel all right, so I know there's a lot going on here, but right here are the 135 six pot calipers. I had them powder coated and then I rebuilt them all with new seals, gaskets, everything have been redone on these. And then I powder coated them with CarPro, just some generic off the shelf stuff. They feel pretty good, nothing crazy, but hopefully it does help. Uh, next we have the rears right here. These look and feel awesome as well. So these are just the two pot. Right here we have our pads, which we're going to need. Um, right here is kind of the main star of what's allowing this to happen. We have the bracket. So this bracket allows you to adapt your regular E46 brakes to your Brembo calipers right here. So we have all the hardware, we have new lines. Again, on their site, it depends. This is for a non-M car. They have all different brackets depending on the car you're putting them on. I mentioned we're going to need some wheel spacers. So we have 12 for the rear, 10 for the front. I don't think you need any spacers in the rear. I just wanted the more aggressive look over here we have our new brake sensor because this is the only sensor that's going to fit on these and then we'll adapt it to the e46 plug we have some other various caps and stuff we're going to need some set screws and the one thing you're probably wondering it's missing and that's the rotors the rotors are over there in a box i'm not going to show that to you if you're using this on a non-m e46 so a 330 ci like i am you are going to need non-m e46 front rotors and then you're gonna need E46 M3 rear rotors, and that's exactly what I have from a company called R1 Concepts. Again, I'll have all of this linked down below if you guys wanna follow along exactly what I'm doing. Never done this before, apparently it's supposed to fit, so let's take off the old calipers and see if it fits. All right, so I actually already completed the other side. It's actually a completely new day. I did the other side so I knew what I was doing, and now I'm coming back to do the passenger side. Uh, Basically, what I did was took off the wheel, drained all the fluid from the calipers. I already sucked everything out from the reservoir, and then I put a power bleeder down below on the nipple of the old caliper and was able to suck any fluid so I don't have any dripping issues. So that's really what we're gonna do now. We're gonna pull off the wheel. We're gonna spray the brake down line, the brake line down with PB Blaster just so I don't have any issues getting it off. And then we are, ooh, this one's actually kind of scrapes a little. Then we are going to get all of the fluid out of the brakes so we don't have to deal with dripping everywhere. So let's get started. All right, so we have the connection up there. The brake line connector is soaking in PB blast. We ended up breaking the caliper bolts. Those are just two 17 millimeter bolts. And now we are going to take off the bleeder nipple right here. This is a power bleeder that I have. It's literally the best thing on the planet. Stop bleeding stuff manually. Uh, right now we really need this fluid. Gravity fed out isn't going to be enough to suck out all of the brake fluid just because I kind of got most of it out as I just got brake fluid all over me. But you just attach this line to the nipple, undo it, and then start pressing this button and it's using a compressor and it will suck out all the fluid. So the next thing right here, we have an 11 millimeter nut or, and we are going to undo it. This is for the brake line. That actually wasn't bad. Sometimes they can be pretty tight. The rears are really bad on the other side. So just take that off and that will allow the brake line to fully come out. It's sitting in this little housing. If you, sh It's gonna need some little persuasion depending on how long it's been on the car, but that will allow it to pull out and then we can take the caliper off. So now to take off the caliper, I've already loosened these. We're gonna use a 3 8 Milwaukee right angle wrench with a 17 millimeter 
socket. This tool is awesome. I don't advise breaking the caliper bolts with it just because they can be very tight. I, I just don't want to wreck it, but. And just hold the caliper because it's going to fall off. And just hold the line upright because there is still some fluid in it. We just don't want anything to leak out. Next, we can take the rotor off, and there usually is a star bit holding it in. Actually, this one looks like an owl. It's actually an Allen. All right, I'll be right back. Now, pro tip for when you're putting these back in, be sure to put some sort of anti-seize on these. These seize, these seize to the hub all the time. Definitely recommended. I mean, always replace these, never reuse them, and always put anti-seize of some sort. I've always had issues with these. And just like that, it's off. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up this whole mating surface. So it's now time to put the front rotor on. Again, I did mention this in the beginning, but we are running rotors from a company called R1 Concepts. I've never ran them before. I usually go with Zimmerman, but unfortunately the Zimmerman ones um, didn't have drilled and slotted rears because the rears are actually M3 rotors. So the front, if you're working on a 330 CI or any E46 that's a 330 or 325, you'll run 330 front rotors and you'll run E46 M3 rear rotors if you're doing rear 135 calipers like I am. So that's what I'm doing. So we're gonna go throw these on right now. These are just standard 330 rotors and they will bolt right up. Take it, get it into place. Gotta match the hole up. Okay, now we can take the lines. I'll show you what we're gonna do with the line. We're actually gonna bolt up the, I'm gonna take you guys over the bench. We're gonna tighten up one of the lines and we're gonna put on the bracket for the 135 caliper. I already put the brakes in. I'll show you guys how they should look. Uh, you should know how to put brake pads in. Yes, Brembo's are a little different, but not gonna show that in this video. Okay, so here is the beautiful powder-coated calipers. I already have the brake pads in. They're kind of floppy, that's just how they are. Uh, right here, I've mounted the bleeder, which is, you should already have on yours, and then this is the nipple for the brake lines from Seems Legit Garage. Uh, we have the brake line right here that will thread to it on the car, which goes like that. The reason why I did it is it makes it easier so this can spin without the whole line spinning. If I mounted this to the line, then the whole line would spin and we don't want that. And yeah, so that's that. Then right here we have the mounting bracket. I know they're not the same color. You don't see it. So yes, it kind of looks a little weird, but whatever. We have the new hardware included. So th these are the hardware for the bracket and these are the hardware from the bracket to the car's hub. So this goes like that. Another tip, I recommend tightening these up on the car. So you can get them as tight as possible and then tighten it fully up on the car. Reason is um, you just can't get a lot of torque on them. You could put some thread blocker on it. I'm not going to, but that is another alternative of something you could do. So we'll just go, it looks like they are a All right, so I tightened up this nipple, tightened up the bleeder valve. Um, I think that should be it. We'll tighten up the bracket again on the car. This line right here, I tightened up these two fittings right here. This is the fitting that's going to the car side. This is the caliper side. So on the car side, the nut will spin so the, wire, so the cable won't spin. And then on the caliper side, this still spins perfectly so we won't have any twisting of the line. So let's go put it on the car, tighten everything up. Should be good to go. All right, so now it's time to put the caliper on the hub and the rotor, and you just kind of have to slide open the pads. I definitely recommend putting the pads in before the bracket, like I did. Um, you can do it the other way. I did it the other way on the other one, and it was fine, but just warning you guys. All right, I finally got the caliper mounted. Definitely a little difficult. They're heavy. They've just been powder coated, so I'm nervous to do anything to them. I don't want to damage them. I know powder coating is a lot stronger than paint but still still a little nerve-wracking um, we're just tightening them up it is a 10 millimeter or 10 at it's a number 10 Allen hex head and it's like that for the bracket itself and for the 
bolts that hold in the bracket to the hub, which I really like that they use the same size. And they're black, so they go really good. All right, now it is time to snake the line. You have this nice rubber grommet, which is used by the factory. This is the side that's not gonna flex, but up there it will flex where it mounts to the car. So we're gonna snake it through the factory location and it's gonna sit perfectly like it would from the factory, which even though these are aftermarket, they seems legit, did such a good job that they just fit perfectly like they should, sit right into place. And yeah, I really like them. So far they've been, obviously I haven't, ran them on the car, but the way they fit has been just superb, so I, I can't expect any less. Okay, so that side's up, and now I'm gonna put on a glove, just because the side's a little dirtier. I'm actually gonna clean the side up with a wire brush first, and then we'll stick this right up in the hole and tighten that up, and that will be done. These lines are a little longer than factory. It's fine, it won't. I did very good. Put, put the wheel back on, checked, turn side to side. You'll have no issues, even though these are a little longer than factory. All right, so now we can take this line, center it here, make sure the fitting is down all the way. This piece is kind of annoying. It sits right up into, it actually goes into the hole. And it should thread on very easy if it doesn't cross-threading it, most likely. And just like that, the 135 calipers are mounted to the front. It really is very simple. The only thing that I have to watch out for on my end is that I have style 135 wheels. So yes, 135 calipers with 135 wheels, which are the ZHP ones, and they don't actually fit. They'll hit against the face. 18s are fine to clear this, but they don't clear the face of it. So we're gonna put on some burger tuning or burger motorsport spacers right now. So here, look at the spacers in the front. We're running 10 mil, just enough to hit off the face so you're not hitting it. Here's a look at them. We already have the other side in. These are for the E-Series. They'll fit the E46, any E-Series. They look awesome on the E46. I gotta show you guys what they look like. They just look absolutely killer. So we'll um, throw them on right now so you can take a look at the fitment. Basically in the box, what we get is we get the spacer, new bolts, and some anti-seize. Like I mentioned, I already did the other side, so that's why it's open, but we're gonna take some anti-seize and just cover everything that it's going to touch. So I like to start with just doing this hub area right here, and then the rest kind of goes on the spacer itself. And this is really just to allow it to come off easier when you wanna take them off or if you need to take them off. Yeah, I run these on my F10, made a full dedicated video on my F10 of how to install it, it's the same thing. Uh, I'll link that in the cards and down below, but yeah, they really add such more aggressive look to your BMW with stock wheels. I think it's an awesome upgrade. Just have a little bit wider stance, they look good, and yeah, they're very good mod to do to any BMW that I can suggest when you first get one. It'll just have more presence, and it's the little subtle details on your car that really stand out to me. So that's something I always look at my F10 and I'm like, wow, the stance on this thing is just insane. And it doesn't look outrageous. It looks, it's a really good, just like OEM plus type stance in my opinion. And then if you order two sets, you get a free weight wheel hanger, which of course you're gonna need a wheel hanger when you're putting wheels on these calipers because you don't want to mess them up. So this just goes in like this. Bam. I'll get the wheel hanger on and we'll throw on the wheels. So here is the wheel hanger right here. Just threads in, makes putting on wheels on a BMW so much easier. It also aligns your spacer. So if you had to align the wheel and the spacer, cause this could potentially spin, it's really not gonna be a fun time. So now putting these on are super easy. Just gotta watch the caliper obviously still, but it has something to align to. Still kind of a challenge on these things, at least for me. I'm sure some people are pros at it, but it's still a little bit of a struggle for me. Now, usually I advised against using an impact gun to put on wheels, but this Milwaukee, if you set it on setting two and let it buzz for like just a second, it is very close to factory spec, and I literally just 
have to tighten it just a tad with the torque wrench. So that's what I'm going to do. So believe it or not, that is extremely close to 85 foot pounds of torque doing what I do because I'm still going to take a torque wrench to it after and it still needs to tighten it just a tad. But that's it. Your 135 calipers with brand new rotors are on the car and they look absolutely killer. So let's drop the car. Suspension still needs to settle, but we're going to work on the rears now and that's a little more work. There's no adapter needed, but the shield on the back needs work and the lines are a little more complicated. So that'll be the next plan. All right, so now we're working on the rear. The one tricky thing about the rear is the calipers bolt right up. There's no bracket needed, but you do need to modify the back plate. There's like a, the dust shield. You kind of have to bend it and modify that to fit correctly just because the rotors are M3 rear rotors. So we're going to do that. We're going to take the wheel off, spray down the connection. And while we're spraying down the connection, we'll start loosen, loosening up the caliper bolts and then hopefully the PB blaster gets into the brake line and we should be all set. So let's take off the wheel. So I didn't bother showing it, but I just bled the all the fluid out of this caliper and this line. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the two 17 millimeter bolts holding on the caliper and we're going to undo the 11 millimeter nut holding on the brake line and the caliper should come off. It's really simple to take the calipers off on this car, which is, well, most cars are really simple. So it's really nice that they come off really easy, easily. Just make sure you spray everything down. These cars are old and things usually do start to rust out on them. So take your time and you'll be all set. So I undid the rear brake line in the back. One weird thing is that there's this clip right here holding on the brake line to the trailing arm. And what I did is I basically took a screwdriver right in here and just pried it out. And that will allow the rest of the brake line to just pop right out. I don't know why it's like that in the rear, but not like that in the front. But regardless, that's how it comes out. And it is a little bit of a challenge. So spray it down with some PB blaster and you should be able to get it out. Now we just can undo the two 16 millimeter bolts holding in the caliper and everything should come out. So same thing as last time, we're going to clean up the Hub assembly, we're going to bend this back. You can replace with an M3 one, but I think it's too much work. Mine does kind of look like shit. I do realize that. Uh, the e-brake, I just put some PB Blaster on it just to make sure that I can move it because I'm probably going to have to readjust my e-brakes. Uh, so yeah, I just put some PB Blaster and you're able to move it freely. You should be good, so let's clean the hub. So as it sits right now, the E46 M3 rotor, one, your little screw that's supposed to hold in the rotor will no longer work when you do this, which kind of sucks. So that's why I'm using this little piece right here. But if we put this on, one, it doesn't really fit over it. That's just the e-brake needs to be adjusted a little bit, but two, it hits everywhere. So we have to bend the shroud to be able to fit correctly. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And I'm actually gonna undo the e-brake just a little. I think it's a little too tight. All right, the next step, I have the rotor mounted again. I'm using the Burger Motorsport little pin to be able to hold up the rotor. And I also threw on just some bolts that I had. And now we are going to put on the 135 rear calipers. I already have the brake pads inserted. They go like this, very nice. You push in these pins through the brake pads and there's this retaining clip. I tightened up the bleeder valve. I don't have the lines bolted up only because I don't have the correct line. So I'm waiting for the correct brake lines to come in, but I'm just throwing on the caliper now and then we also have to worry about the sensor which we'll do in a minute using new hardware uh, I think that's a good idea because the front you're using new hardware I think the rear should also use some new hardware while you're at it thankfully these are a lot lighter than the front and again no bracket is needed like I've mentioned a few times now and just like that they're on only thing we have to worry about now is running that sensor so I'm gonna figure out how we're gonna run that sensor. We do have to adapt it. The connector is different on the car side. 
So I have the caliper put back on. I actually ended up using the original E46 brake wear pad sensor. It's the same exact size for the rear, only the front is different. So I didn't even reuse it. Mine was in good condition. So I didn't want to cut and splice and do whatever to get the 135 one to fit because it just snapped right in. So that's all set. This is rear spacer. I believe it is 12 that I got. It's a 12 millimeter spacer. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the front. We're gonna take some anti-seize, put it on the hub area and put anti-seize on the spacer itself. Last step is to put the wheel back on using the wheel hanger makes it so much easier to get these on. All right, before we close out today's video, I do wanna give you guys an awesome look at the 135 brake calipers. We're also testing out a new gimbal today, so the this sh clip should look super smooth and very nice, so let me know what you guys think. We're gonna do some B-roll with it as well. But here's a look at the 135 calipers. We did front and rear. We also added burger tuning spacers. I believe these are 10 millimeters in the front. I'll put in the description what we have, but absolutely beautiful so they do clear the 135 wheels with a spacer if you don't have a spacer you'll hit on the face of it so that's a look at the front wheels awesome powder coated in phoenix yellow with black bmw logos and i believe r1 concept drilled and slotted rotors with so for the pads we used hawk hps we also used the seams legit garage kit so the 135 calipers need a new mounting bracket to adapt to the E46, they can go E46, E46 M3, and I believe E36 M3. So we used their brackets along with their hardware that came with it and brake lines. Yes, you do need new brake lines. They come with very nice looking stainless steel brake lines that bolt right up to the hard line on the E46, no problems. So super cool there. Uh, we also did all brand new seals and pistons inside of the caliper, something you should definitely do just because a lot of people abuse the crap out of them. They're actually plastic from BMW, mine were broken, so we upgraded those as well. Again, 10 mil in the back, 10 mil in the front, and then we'll show you guys the rear right now. I believe these are 12 millimeter. I forget, I'll definitely link them down in the description, but these are the 135 rears. A lot of people do not do these. They bolt right up. Most people just do 135 fronts, but I recommend doing the rears just for the look. Another thing, so no brackets needed from Seems Legit Garage. You just need new brake lines. The brake lines I'll have linked down below as they are a little different. So those bolt right up, same thing to the hard line. They screw right in, no issues there. Bled them super easy. Your brake feel is completely different. It's a lot more linear. So for me, driving my F10 than going to drive this car, you really have to push down on the brake. It stops amazing, but it just doesn't have that initial bite. It's more linear, which is something you'd want for the track. Daily driving, I don't know how you feel about that. I've gotten used to it. I like them. Things stops on a dime, especially with the R1 Concept rotors in the Hawk HPS pads. Uh, other than that, um, didn't touch the e-brake. We did have to trim the shroud, the heat, sh the heat shroud that's on the back. You can either replace those or I just bent mine and cut them. Yes, you should replace them, but unfortunately you have to take the whole hub off and it's just a pain in the ass. So I just trimmed, cut, bent, made it fit. And yeah, that's about it. So far they've been doing awesome. Really like the look of it. Yes, they, I kind of got them for the look. The actual physical brake caliper is not any bigger than your old on the surface. So you're not really getting more braking power, but what you are getting is a different brake feel. And depending on the pads you put on, you can stop a little quicker. So we did upgraded pads. I think I got these with like EBC reds and I think they're a little too aggressive. I think these pads that I'll have linked below are perfect for the street and I'm super happy with this upgrade. If you guys have any questions at all regarding this upgrade, leave them in the comments down below. I'll have everything that you need for this upgrade linked down below. So check it out there and yeah, if you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up, consider subscribing and I will catch you guys in the next one.